Hi, today I'll be doing some string clamp and machine maintenance on my Prince Neos 1000. Unlike my previous video where I featured my P7000 with swivel clamps, this machine requires a different method and I'll share some tips. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before we get started, we wanna make sure we have the proper supplies. I did a previous uh, video where I cleaned my P7000 with swivel clamps. But in this machine, it'll uh, require different kinds of supplies. So I'll start with the uh, lubricant and you can use the WD-40. That's probably the easiest to find, but I actually prefer to use this LPS brand number one. I feel like it leaves a nice uh, film where it's uh, nice and lubricated and it helps uh, prevent rust. And then I also have, instead of alcohol, I'm going to be using a automotive brake cleaner. It's uh, really strong and uh, cleans really well. And then I have compressed air. I have a, a scissors and a toothbrush. All right, I also have a shop gray paper towel, which I'm gonna be cutting into eight pieces. And what I do is I just fold it in half and I just cut it. And this is gonna be useful because I like using this to uh, clean and uh, for everything really. But uh, I use it once and I just throw it away. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it again. And from this one sheet, I'm gonna get eight of these uh, little pieces that I'll be using. And I might not even use all of them throughout this uh, cleaning process. So, so I have these eight pieces now. All right, so let's go over to the machine and get started. All right, so before we get started, I did wanna mention that the methods that I'll be using and the tips that I'll be sharing is specific for the Prince Neos 1000. There are other lockout machines that you can apply some of these tips for. Uh, the Gamma and the Alpha, where you have a tension arm assembly and a lockout tensioner. So you can use the tips that I'm sharing for that. But when you get to the string clamp system, those are swivel clamps. So you can refer to my other video as far as uh, maintaining and cleaning those uh, clamps. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna start with the tension head assembly. And for all of these parts, it's really important that you know what to clean and what to lubricate because you don't wanna lubricate the wrong parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my toothbrush and start with the tension head jaws. That's this area right here. Uh, you can use it to kind of brush out, get out any kind of dust or residue that might have um, get uh, built up. And then you get your compressed air and you just shoot it in there and just all right so next we're going to go ahead and lubricate inside of the tension hot head jaws and you want to be very careful like not to spray it all over the place so you definitely want to make sure you use that straw and uh just gently push it and uh just try and get a little bit in there just enough to see it coming out through the tip so it's not even spraying at this point. I mean, it's literally just dripping out of the tip. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. And if you accidentally spray it, like let's say if it did get on top of there, uh, we are gonna clean that off. So the main thing is you wanna get it inside of there without spraying it all over the place, if possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, wipe that off and I can use my brake cleaner to do all the cleaning. So what I'm gonna do is do that now so I can get rid of all that um, lubricant inside of the actual jaws because you want that area to be nice and clean. Uh, actually, I'm gonna wipe some of this LPS on the other parts that's showing that I can wipe it on uh, the LPS and that'll help prevent rust. So, so that'll be good. I got a little bit on there, but making use of that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray some of this brake cleaner now. Just uh, making sure that uh, if you, you wanna be in a well-ventilated area because this thing is pretty strong, uh, preferably if you can uh, do it outside or if you're not in outside, just uh, make sure you have good ventilation. And I'm gonna be spraying this over a uh, waste can, waste basket, so. All right, so I'm gonna just catch that uh, area inside of the jaws. I uh, folded that uh, paper towel in half and just making sure I get that nice and clean in there. Uh, I'm just gonna catch the top part of this uh, jaws too, just to make sure there's nothing that'll um, drip down in there. All right, so we got that nice and clean. Now I did take off the covers, if you didn't notice. Uh, 
uh, from the tension head to, to get to the, uh, the brake disc. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, again spray, spray some on the, my um, paper towel. And uh, what I wanna do is just pinch it onto the disc and just rotate the rear handle and just get it nice and clean that way. Um, yeah, so this uh, brake cleaner, I got, got kind of the idea because it's just like uh, the brakes on a car. So, uh, but again, it's very potent. So yeah, you wanna make sure um, you have good ventilation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and leave this on the side. So that's good to go. And I'll just use the same um, piece of uh, paper towel and just clean off uh, what I put on there before. So you definitely want to lubricate this. So I'm going to clean this first just to just get it clean off. And you can even use your toothbrush to clean inside the gear. So I'll do some of that on this. Now this machine is not that dirty because it is pretty well maintained. But if you haven't done it for a while, you'll notice that when you're cleaning inside of the gears that there'll be a lot of gunk that comes out of here. So yeah, you want to get all of that stuff out of there. All right, so I got this uh, nice and cleaned off, but I am gonna follow it up with some LPS and this will help make it slide a lot easier and also um, reduce uh, rust, you know, having that lubricant on there. So. Especially if you live near the ocean or um, any place that uh, as if your machine is outside in the garage, uh, you definitely want to make sure you can prevent rust. So I'm going to spray some of the LPS on another piece of this. Oh, this is the brake cleaner and <laughs> get the LPS. Yeah, again, you want to make sure you're, it's okay to clean all the parts, but you definitely want to, don't want to lubricate the wrong part. So. All right, so I'm just gonna coat this with this LPS. And again, I don't like to spray it on there because I don't want this stuff dripping and getting messy. Um, and if you have too much oil and too much lubricant, when it rubs against your clothes, then you know, you're gonna get um, stains on your clothes. So uh, this has a nice film on it. I'm gonna actually wipe it off a little bit because I wanna just, again, put a light coat, but uh, this will be good to Again, help it slide more easily and keep it from rusting. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. Just gonna. All right, so next we're gonna get into the uh, the string clamps and the glide bars. So uh, I'll go ahead and grab another piece and spray some, um, we're gonna be using that brake cleaner again. All right, so what you wanna do is take off the clamp. I folded this into about four ports and then you're just gonna get inside of the teeth. I don't feel like you'd really need to use a toothbrush for this, uh, yeah, for these kind of clamps. And then again, I'm just getting inside of the uh, where it slides on the glide bars. Um, now these clamps are, I hardly use this machine, but if you haven't done it in a while, uh, your rag will be, um, I mean, your paper towel will be pretty black. So um, yeah, you wanna make sure that you clean it often enough so you don't see that kind of buildup. All right, so after a while it will get kind of shredded. So I'm gonna just throw that one away and grab a new one. You can also use hand towels. Uh, that works too for uh, uh, cleaning purposes. You know, those hand towels that have, uh, that are folded, that come in a pack. And I found that those work really well too, but definitely not regular paper towel because that tends to just fall apart. All right, so I got the teeth. I got the uh, area where it slides onto the glide bars and I did both clamps. Uh, on my other video, I did lubricate the parts that are touching right here, uh, that were in contact, but I, I feel like I don't need to really lubricate it for this particular clamp. So uh, it works pretty well without any kind of lubrication there. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
Well, this one's still good. I'm gonna get the glide bars next. So you just uh, fold it over. You're just gonna get the glide bars both sides. Yeah, so there's a little bit of black on that. And And then I'm gonna take it off, but I'm also gonna clean the areas that uh, that was sliding in the track, just to, again, I'm just taking off buildup that um, was from the previous time that I uh, lubricated it. So I'm just cleaning that off. Let me just grab a new one here. Just want to clean the plates right there. All right, so we're gonna um, next. I'm gonna clean within inside of the tracks that the glide bars slide uh, back and forth in. So um, again, I'm just gonna spray another piece of this paper towel. And what's good about this is you can just really fold it and get it into. Um, into the groove if you just fold it like in a piece like this. And I'm just gonna slide it into the groove and really get inside of there and just kind of clean out whatever's, whatever was in there before. So yeah, it's definitely gonna, um, you're gonna see all that uh, buildup of um, dirt that you get after using the clamps for a while. So. I'm just going to try and utilize this one piece for all four sides by turning it over. And we got one more side here. Right in here. All right, so I'm going to follow up by lubricating that area. And again, I never want to spray it directly on the machine. It just gets too messy. And uh, yeah, you don't want to get it all over your machine. All right, so I got the LPS. And I fold it in half. I'm going to basically spray it pretty much in that, in that one half that I was um, holding it up to. And then I'm going to just fold it the same way I did it um, in half and half again. And I just want to get it right inside of that track and just only put the lubricant right in that area. Um, and again, anytime you uh, string and if you accidentally rub your clothes against it, you don't want to get, uh, you know, stain marks and stuff. So I think it's good to just make sure that you're um, lubricating it where it really needs it and not um, all over the place. So, all right, so I got two out of the four tracks and I'm rotating this just to give it a nice clean uh, part of the paper towel. And, oh. All right, and we got our last uh, side here at the top. All right, so that's good there. I'll go ahead and just use the same piece and um, just put some of this on this area right here just to kind of eliminate um, any time, you know, you can, you want to try and reduce rust. So uh, just put it on this bar right here just to bring this out. I might as well take this out while I'm at it. I rarely do this, but since I'm in, on a roll here, I'll just figure I'll just do it. Uh, yeah, so this part you don't need to do it often, but yeah, it's just nice to have it Again, you don't want any kind of rust building up. So So this machine is pretty old. I mean, I, I I'm thinking it's at least 20 years old So uh, I don't use it a whole lot, but I really try to maintain it the best I can whenever I do string All right, so I'll just go ahead and put that in but again, I, I rarely uh, clean that um, that bar right there um all right, I'm just gonna clean around this area right here because I was touching it with my hand that had the lubricant on it. So I'll just do one final pass with the brake cleaner and get that all cleaned off right there. It 
was just this top part I was touching with my hand that um, had some LPS on it. All right, so those are the parts that you need to clean first and then follow up by lubrication. In terms of how often you should clean your clamps and your glide bars on this particular machine, I can think of three situations where you do so. One, if you're noticing any kind of string clamp slippage. I did a video on this, so I'll provide the link below. But if you're working with a lot of the type of strings that have that silicone coating, it can actually build up in your clamps and cause that slippage. Another time that you should clean your clamps would be when you're working with natural gut. By cleaning your clamps, it'll allow you to adjust your clamps looser and eliminate the chances of crushing or marking the gut. The third situation would be if you're stringing at a professional tournament, I would just clean your clamps at the end of the day so you have a nice clean machine the next day. As far as the uh, rest of the machine, what I did with the cleaning and the lubrication, I would do it at least once a month just to make sure that your machine will last you a long time. If you'd like to learn more about lockup machines like this Prince Neos 1000, I did a couple videos, one on consistent tensioning and the other on how to check tension calibration. So I provided the links below if you want to check it out. Now earlier I mentioned that I thought my machine was 20 years old. So it made me curious and I wanted to check. It's actually 26 years old. So you can see that if you maintain your machine over the years, it will last you a long time. Thanks for watching. Happy stringing. And let your strings play.